Let's say you are building a simple TypeScript library without any dependencies. How would you publish it so that other people can use it? You might think you need to add the package.json file to your repository, transpire your TypeScript code to JavaScript, then publish the JavaScript code to NPM. But what if I told you that you might not need any of these steps? What if we can publish a JavaScript library with type safety, zero build steps, and zero dependencies on Microsoft products? Let's find out how in this video with today's sponsor, Bugs RSS. Get notified about your favorite RSS feeds in your Discord server for just $10 a year. Link in the description to learn more. So let's forget about TypeScript for a moment and start with a simple index.js file. How can we ship this file as a library and import it from other JavaScript code? The simplest way is to copy the index.js file to the apps node modules manually. Surprisingly, this actually works and TypeScript, LSP, and Node.js will recognize this as a library just fine. But we don't want the users to do this manually. Instead, we want the user to be able to install it with a single command. To make this happen, we can push the index.js file to a Git repository. Then the user can simply install it using yarn add, pnpm install, or bun install commands. All you need to do is to specify the package name followed by the git repository URL. This method works and will place your entire library repository under node module slash your package name. Now, by pushing your library to a GitHub repository, you can avoid relying on Microsoft Prod. I mean, by pushing it to any Git repository other than GitHub, you can avoid relying on Microsoft products to publish your library. Now let's talk about another way to publish your library without NPM, publishing it as a tarball. With this approach, you don't even need a Git repository. Any HTTP server that can serve static files will do. Just bundle all the necessary files of your library into a tarball file, then upload it to the server. If you use GitHub, you can easily do this by creating a release and specifying which files to include in the release. Then the user can install it in a similar way to installing from a Git repository. One benefit of this approach is that you can include only the necessary files in the tarball, unlike the Git approach where the entire repository is included. Now, you might be wondering, if you don't publish to NPM, do we still need the package.json? Somehow, npm install always requires the package.json file and bun install also requires the package.json file when installing from a tarball. So here's the quick decision tree. If you publish to npm, yes, you need the package.json file. If your library has dependencies, yes, you need the package.json file. If you publish to git and you want to support installation via npm CLI, you need the package.json file. If you are publishing to git, and you are fine with supporting only yarn, pnpm, or bun, no, you don't need the package.json file. If you publish as a tarball and you want to support installation via npm CLI or bun CLI, yes, you need the package.json file. If you publish as a tarball and you are fine with supporting only yarn or pnpm, no, you don't need the package.json file. Now let's talk about TypeScript. If you are writing your library in TypeScript, you are usually required to transpile it to JavaScript before publishing it. I say usually here because some runtimes like bun can directly import TypeScript files as dependencies. So if you are developing a bun specific dependency, you can just publish the TypeScript files directly without a build step. Both bun and TypeScript will recognize it as a library just fine. This is in fact what I did with my library bun HTML live reload. So check it out if you want to see a real world example. And you might have heard that lately Node.js supporting running TypeScript files directly. So we can also just do that with Node.js, right? We can just publish TypeScript directly, right? No, Node.js allows you to run your application TypeScript code directly, but not TypeScript code from dependencies in Node modules. The decision kind of makes sense here because TypeScript code can import JavaScript code, but JavaScript code cannot import TypeScript code. And JavaScript should remain the least common denominator across JavaScript and TypeScript projects, which is why libraries should be published as JavaScript. So the conclusion here is, if you are writing a bun specific library, you can just publish the TypeScript file without a build step. Otherwise, you need to transpire your TypeScript code to JavaScript before publishing it. 
This might sound disappointing because if we want to publish a JavaScript library, we need to choose either type safety or zero build steps. But what if I told you that you can have both? You can have both by manually writing the JavaScript files and DTS files yourself with a little trick. So first let's write the library implementation in JavaScript file, then write the DTS file that describes the types of the function. Seeing this you might think, aha, so if there is a mismatch between the JavaScript implementation and the types in the DTS file, the type checker will show an error, right? Actually no, nah, not yet. You need a little trick to make this work. The little trick you can do is to write a JSDoc comment about the function in the JavaScript file and import the types from DTS file. This way, if your implementation doesn't match the types in the DTS file, TypeScript will show you an error. By writing the DTS file manually, your library doesn't need a build step, you still benefit from type checking, the library user still benefit from type checking, while still being accessible as a normal JavaScript library. Of course, this way of writing the types in separate file is not as ergonomics as writing TypeScript directly, but it's an option. The point is, you have both options. Either have a zero build step with doing everything manually, or have everything automated with a build step. By the way, this is how I did it in my packages, tiny cookie session and tiny HTML builder, so check them out if you want to see a real world example. Now let's go back to the package.json decision tree. If we are writing a library in TypeScript and we don't have any dependencies and we are publishing as a git repository or tarball, we can ditch package.json, right? Well, maybe because you might forget one thing, platform types. If you develop a Node.js library and use Node.js built-in modules like Node.fs or Node.process, you need to install the types node package, therefore you need the package.json file to list it as a dependency. But if you can make your library platform agnostic, the situation changes. The trick is to add web worker to the lib field in tsconfig.json, then start replacing Node.js built-in modules with web worker compatible alternatives. For example, you might replace Node HTTP with fetch, Node crypto with web crypto, and so on. If your library is platform agnostic enough to enable doing this, you can ditch package.json and still have type definitions for the platform APIs. Now, if you are developing a JavaScript library, one trick I want to share is that you can add tscheck command at the top of your JavaScript files. With this, TypeScript will type check your JavaScript files and LSP will show you the errors in your editor without requiring to have tsconfig.json file in your repository. Now, when your repository is minimal and may not have package.json file or even a tsconfig.json file, some editor tools might get confused about where your project root is. For example, for example, if you are using NeoVim with LSP config, the LSP might not show up because it cannot find the project root. So you need to make sure your LSP client is configured to look for alternative root markers. Here is an example configuration I use for NeoVim. This way, if you don't have the package.json file, your LSP recognizes the repository root as a project root or the files directory if it's not in a Git repository. So to summarize, you can ditch some files and build steps from your repository making it more lean and minimal if you are willing to compromise a bit. The word compromise usually has negative connotation, but I personally believe that compromise is what sometimes enables us to identify accidental complexity and leads us to a simpler solution. Thanks for watching and the name is Nick's Hero.